Ahmad made it out of Afghanistan. The former U.S. Army interpreter was able to flee Kabul for the United States. He survived the terrorist attack at Kabul airport, but his family is still there amid the chaos. He found a new home in Fremont, California, but he won't be happy until he's reunited with his wife and children. This is a high tension for me. If the family is left behind there, they are under the threat. It's a new day in Ahmad's new hometown. Fremont, a city of 200,000 people, is home to the largest Afghan community in the United States. Residents call it Little Kabul. Now Ahmad and his brothers also live here. At the end of August, the former U.S. Army translator fled from Kabul, Afghanistan to Kabul, California. The local supermarket is a hub for the community. The first Afghans came to Fremont during the Soviet-Afghan war in the 1980s. Here they can find lots of the things they miss from their old homeland. I like it because much to my city where I lived. That's why we live here. Just like get rid of it. The Taliban, as I know, the, where there I lived, uh, people uh, understood who am I. What was my job? And right now, all these people is uh, connect to the intelligence of Taliban. The intelligence of Taliban is trying to search, to capture, me, or to take my family and, and and detain my family. Ahmad says his wife and children are currently in hiding. He hopes they can soon join him in the U.S. He says it's important to tell us his story, despite the danger it could mean for his loved ones. Sometimes I came with my brother and take The baker is especially popular here, making fresh naan bread around the clock. People apparently come from as far as Los Angeles to buy it. Each meter long piece costs $2.50, and it's not only popular among Afghans. You know, they come from all over, like me, I'm from, uh, and my parents, I'm from out here, but my parents are Indian, so we use this to, like, mix up with other dishes as well, you know? And it's a um, great taste, beautiful. Everything is very good, so uh, the people is coming here and buying is here. It's the same people from 20 years ago, since I was a kid, so they just make it with love. And, uh, and now I feed my kids these. Maywent Market was opened in the 1990s by refugees from Kabul. It's still a family business now run by the second generation, and it's an institution. Owner Kai Karimi says the new wave of refugees can only be good for business. The more population, more mouths to feed, we gotta make more bread. <laughs> But we welcome them, you know, I'm glad they're all out of there, all jokes aside, you know, it's horrible to live like that, even if they are your religion or not, to tell somebody what to do 24-7 or how to wear, how to wipe yourself, how to cry, how to be happy, how to listen to music, it's really disgusting. We're in the 21st century, none of this should be happening, people should be free. So you can tell by looking at their eyes and stuff that they've been through a lot. You know, they have a lot of questions and a lot of worries and a lot of concerns. We try to help as much as we can. You know, since we've been here a little longer, we try to help them out, try to direct them to the right direction if they have like DMV questions or, you know, general questions about where to go, where to live, where to eat, where to sleep, where to pray. And that's very important for Afghans, I feel like it. Ahmad made it to safety, but the horrors of the war are by no means behind him. For now, at least, he has a roof over his head. He's staying with his brother Kamal and his family, making it a seven-person house. They came to California seven years ago. Ahmad is still haunted by memories of his escape. The moment was very dangerous. 
theory because uh, we are counting uh, second by second and the enemies come and captured us. Our offices left, our houses left, our cars is left, our money is left at banks. And we are in a very, very strict situation uh, in order to uh, avoid our lives, in order to do not be killed by the enemies at the ground. And for this case, we uh, just take the family and move toward the airport gates. This was the day of his escape. Ahmad took these pictures with his cell phone at Kabul airport. Thousands of people wanted to get into the airport and out of Afghanistan. There was tear gas everywhere, warning shots were fired. People ignored U.S. officials' warnings of an attack by the terrorist militia ISK. Suddenly a bomb has exploded at the gate and we are falling to the ground and uh, uh, my head was dumb, like no hearing, no thinking, the processing of my uh, head was down for a couple of hours. Two suicide bombers blew themselves up in the crowd, killing 182 people. Among the dead were U.S. soldiers and many Afghan civilians, including women and children. I was suddenly entered with a lot of people, like two, three hundred, suddenly entered to the gate because of the explosion. And the American uh, closed the gate. The American took us straight, directly take us to the aircraft area and put me at aircraft and did not listen what's going on with me or other thousands of Afghans whom, uh, whom were like me. And they had such as my circumstances over there. Their families was left behind. I'm not happy. I'm strictly unhappy because uh, this is a kind of uh, high tension for me. If the families left behind there, they are under the threat. They don't have money. They don't have house. They don't have a supporter. And I did not know who be killed, who be live there. And I was not happy on that day because. I did not know how I came to the USA. It was like a dream. Ahmad still has a long way to go. He has no home of his own, no work permit and no income. The Afghan coalition is a non-profit organization that helps refugees like him. It gives advice on immigration issues and helps with the paperwork. Today we uh, came here uh, to apply uh, some kind of refugee benefits. Okay. Sure thing. And as well as food benefit and other social okay. yeah, green so card and house uh -huh. and whatever uh, assistance the refugees need. Okay, absolutely. No, we can help you fill out all those forms here today. Yeah. If I could have you, yeah, here you go. If I can have you fill this out right here, um, right here with this pen, just sort of start um, with your name and phone number and then we'll go through the process. Ahmad entered the country with temporary status that's now causing him problems. The authorities help refugees with food stamps and other services, but for that assistance, Ahmad needs so-called SIV status, which the U.S.'s local Afghan workers usually receive. Without it, he also won't get a work permit. We need working employment, we need shelter, we need food, we need welcome money, whatever the uh, SIV immigrants have under the SIV, uh, whatever the benefits is required, and we demand that. We do not demand anything more. Just as long as if they don't give us any benefits and they can provide us work. In Ahmed's particular case, right, he qualified as an SIV um, visa holder, but on his route here, they stamped parolee. And so while he's here right now, sort of waiting in limbo as a parolee, and so does he actually gain the benefits that he would if, if his refugee status was accepted? So as he navigates this, there's going to be a lot of challenges on what services he can obtain, whether it's health insurance, whether it's um, housing vouchers. 
It's a nerve-wracking time for Ahmad. He's not even sure whether he'll be allowed to stay here in California in the long term. The biggest challenge for these refugees is housing, and the State Department actually um, released a list of the 19 cities for refugees to be resettled, and none of those cities were in California, again, because this has one of the most expensive, expensive housing markets. It's Friday in Little Kabul. Every week, the Afghan community gathers at the Abu Bakr Mosque to pray. But the number one topic remains the current situation in Afghanistan. Abdul Rashid preaches at the mosque. He says that those fleeing the Taliban today have it easier than the refugees who came 40 years ago. In 1980, there wasn't a single mosque in this whole entire Bay Area. And now if you go any direction, a few miles, you will find uh, uh, one of the masajid or one of the mosques. And um, when, they come to a, when they come to a place like this, they actually come to something that they will recognize, something that they will, a place that they can actually call home because it's the house of God. always welcome anybody. It doesn't really matter if they're from Afghanistan in general. It could be from any Islamic society, non-Islamic society. If they come here and they, and they reach out their hand, we, are, we try to fulfill that prophetic tradition of helping them and, and uh, um, providing for them the best that we can. The new arrivals are welcome here, but the trauma of what they left behind remains, as does the concern for their loved ones, who still fear for their lives in Afghanistan and don't know if they'll ever be able to leave.